Hey everybody, Robert with RC Archery. For this week's Tuesday Tip of the Week, I'm gonna be going over how to level your sight and also how to get the bubble in your scope to make sure that it's level and not throwing you off on your setup. So when it comes to setting up a sight, a lot of your work and a lot of your effort can actually be thrown off by a simple level here in your scope. Now, a lot of the levels when they come from the factory, they're gonna be put in with two screws, similar to what you see on the bottom of this shrewd scope here. And for me in particular, I've actually gone through and changed out the bubble on the scope. I actually wanted to make it blue. Um, besides matching the equipment and what I'm doing, I actually can see the um, level, the bubble inside the level itself actually better with the blue over the yellow or red or something like that because it just seems like it catches my attention. It's, uh, it's an offset color. That bubble in there is actually a clear while the, the level is blue versus a yellow level with more of like a yellow um, looking bubble. So it's something that I can keep a secondary, you know, visual reference on when I'm aiming and set up and it's just easier to, to pinpoint, easier to look at for me on my setups. But when you change these out or even when you get them from the factory, I like to check them because these aren't always level. Um, whether it be the way that you've tightened down the screws or somebody that's put them on there, or who knows what it could be. And the way that I do that is with the bubble level that I use when I set my knock heights. It's the exact same tool and it clamps onto the arrows, which means that you can get it to clamp onto the cylinder here on the side as well. So this is the arm that would actually attach um, the clamp for uh, this to go on my side itself. So what I do is I place this on there and then I'm gonna take this and level the bubble inside the yellow tool and see what my bubble in the actual scope housing looks like. Now this one's pretty spot on the way that it is right now, but let's say that it's off a little bit. What would you adjust, what would you do? Well, the main thing you're gonna to wanna to start to look at is the screws here in the bottom. And you can actually tighten one side or the other depending on which end you need to start moving that level and that can help you set that up. So one of the tools that I like to use whenever I'm setting up my sights initially is a tool from BrightSight. This is their third axis leveling tool and, and really just all axis leveling tool that they have. And it's got a bubble here, it's adjustable. And what I do with this is set up my initial first, second and third axis settings on here. So I'm gonna run through that really quick for you. I've got a new sight here from Axel Sights. This is gonna be their shorter uh, six inch carbon bar and their Achieve sight. That's the non-locking sight. They also have a locking one as well. Wasn't something specifically that I wanted. Um, so I'm gonna set all this up now. Judging off of what I was doing with uh, my previous 3D setup, I'm gonna center the way that I set this sight up to begin with. In the past, I ran it all the way at the top, but the way that uh, my peep height and the way that the bows and everything are working, it seems like that I can center the sight here and I get the uh, actual scope and the rod and everything running in the position that I like. It's not so far at the bottom, it's more in the center toward the top, uh, towards the top rather. That's kind of what I like and that's the way that I like to run all this. So when you get these sights, it comes with all the hardware that you're gonna need. It also comes with some tools for it as well. So I'm gonna take that, put everything here on the table. You're gonna first take out these two washers and the two screws that they supply here. This is what's gonna be used on the, uh, uh, setting up the first axis rather. Now you notice when you first set this up, they're gonna be uh, oblong here on these holes. So it allows you to be able to tilt this back and forth. You need a little bit of movement left and right, obviously. That's what we're gonna to use to set up the first axis. Um, when I initially get this, what I'm gonna do is actually just snug these up just a touch. I want it to still be able to move, but I don't want it to move freely on its own. It's still gonna be able to move whenever I'm turning it. So you can see that oblong here at the top. I'm gonna to take this locking bar out because I already have one set up on my bright sight tool and put all of this in the sight here. You'll need a level with this. I don't use my scope housing on this setup right here. Uh, the reason I don't do that is because I don't know if the second, third axis and everything is set up correctly yet. So what I'll do is actually use a Hamsky third axis leveling tool. This is a tool that I'm going to use a little bit later, um, but it comes in really handy to begin with here. Now there's a couple adjustments you'll need to make. It's probably hard to see from where you're at right here, but there's a tool right here to level this bubble up. Now once that is level, and I'm actually gonna look at the axis, uh, the Hamsky tool rather, and see what the bubble's doing in that. 
And then I'm gonna use that to adjust everything on the uh, first axis here. As you can see here, I've got the uh, bubbles in both the Hamsky tool and the bright side tool. They're both level now. So that first axis I'm setting up on the bow is now complete and I can work on my second. So once I have the initial setup for the first axis done, then I'm gonna start with the second. The second actually involves a scope. It's gonna be the up and down movement. So the movement in this direction with the scope. And what you'll see here is that with the level on the bright side tool and the Hamsky tool, so it's still in the center on both of those, that's showing that the first axis is correct. So this bar right in here is straight up and down. You'll notice that the level here on the bubble is actually up just a little bit over the edge. So it's showing the scope to be a little bit too high this way. So what I'm gonna do next is get the adjustment tools out and I'm gonna adjust it to where it comes a little bit down. So when it comes to setting up the second and third axis on these scopes, I actually have a pretty cool system. Um, they have a set of uh, screws here that you can adjust and there's some hash marks here, that's for the third axis. There's actually another set here on the very back and that's gonna be for the second axis and it's gonna have some adjustment hash marks as well. So what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna adjust this to where the scope housing is gonna tilt from where it is here to bringing it a little bit further down like that so it'll all level itself out. So bear in mind this doesn't always come super easy. Sometimes you'll have to go back and forth a little bit on adjustments. Maybe you tighten it down, it moves, and um, you have to keep you know kind of messing with it, but definitely makes a difference to get everything centered up here for the second axis before you go to the third because it's gonna be your starting point to make sure your third axis is correct as well. Now when it comes time to adjust for our third axis, this is where things get a little bit different for different archers. Some archers are perfectly fine using the bright side tool throughout this whole thing and adjusting their third axis to the level on the bright side tool. Some archers like to put the bow, or put the sight on their bow rather, and then adjust it at full draw. Uh, now me, I've done this both ways in the past. I've had some bows and some risers in the past that don't flex and move as much. And depending on where I'm running my sight bar, the distance away from the riser, I may not run into as many problems as well, so I can get away with uh, using the bright sight tool and adjusting it. Um, but for me personally and where that I'm at right now, I prefer to put the sight on the bow, get it at full draw, and then adjust it and see what I'm looking at from there because there is a little bit of a riser you know, twist and torque depending on the load on the cable guard and just the way that the limbs twist and everything at full draw. And then also your grip can play a big part into this too, depending on the way that your pressure is and the way that you're um, maybe adding some torque into the bow or into the riser or not, that can play a part too. As you can see here, the level here on the uh, Hamsky, or the bright sky tool is in the middle, but the scope and the uh, Hamsky tool here, it's bubbling a little bit to uh, our right side right now. Uh, so that's showing that the third axis is a little bit off, but because the third axis on the hash marks here is right in the middle on the way it's left the factory from Axel, I'm actually gonna use that, put it on my bow, get it at full draw, and I'll show you how I adjust everything from there. So if you've never mounted a sight before, it's actually extremely easy. There's gonna be two bolts and you're just gonna attach it to the riser. Now, I do wanna go over one thing really quickly because these PSE bows are a little bit different from other bows. Um, being that they have multiple positionings here that you can attach this uh, sight onto your bow. So of course you can have it you know, facing this way, facing the back. I prefer to have it in the back. I think it's just, it looks a little bit better. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit you know, more sturdy, but you can mount it here, you can mount it here, you can mount it here. Now, why would you have different heights here? Well, depending on how you set the bow up. Um, also, depending on the way that you're looking through the peep or your peep height or your anchor points, you may find that different heights on here allow you to have a little bit different range of movement on your sight. And it's also gonna have a little bit more natural, um, you know, reference point and, and adjustment and everything for you, depending on how you're set up. This is something you may have to play with a little bit when you go to, you know, set your bow up. Standard positioning is gonna be all the way down. That's the way they're set up for um, pretty much any bow, geometry-wise. Um, I've run there, and then I've also run one uh, notch up, and either one of them work great, depending on where you're gonna have that peep height and the way that you're gonna set that bow up. Now, if you're an archer that wants to use all of your sight set up and everything that you're doing with the sight actually on the bow, there's also another way that you can do this, and I wanted to go over that really quickly and just let you see what it would look like. Um, what I'm using here is a Last Chance Archery Easy Vice. Um, this is one that I sell in my store, one that I've been using right now, and it works really well. Uh, it holds the bow no problem. It's got a lot of adjustability, 
And what I can do with this is actually set the boat in the vise. I have a bright sight leveling tool here. You can do any kind that you want to. That's just the company that I decided to purchase this from. I have it attached to my riser. And then what I've done with that is put my ham ski tool here on my sight bar. And then I have my scope in there. And you can do the same thing that we were doing before. You can set your first axis with this being level with that your second axis with this level and that bubble level being the exact same, and you'll set your third axis up the exact same way as what I'm about to show you now. So when it comes to setting up third axis, let's talk about what we're doing with that first and why we're doing that. When you look at the site, the way it's sitting right now, your third axis setting is the scope, the way that it's gonna be uh, sitting this direction. So moving in this plane. Now, the reason you're gonna wanna do that is because when you draw a bow back, cable guard here is on one side of the bow only. And as you draw that bow, it's actually gonna put a strain on this side of the riser and this side of the limbs. And what that can cause you to do is have it move in your hand a little bit as far as the way your grip is set up, but it can also actually cause the riser to just twist a little. So depending on the length that you have this side arm set up and also the type of riser that you have and maybe the type of twist you have in it or your actual grip itself, the third axis is gonna allow you to get to full draw and have this sight set up this direction to be level and um, flush with what you're seeing through the scope. So that way, whether you're angled at a downward shot or an upward shot, the bubble itself on the side is gonna remain in the same position. And that's really important, especially if you're shooting uphill or downhill shots on a field course or maybe even on a 3D course, because you don't wanna have some unexpected left and right misses if the third axis adjustment on your scope is incorrect at the moment. So luckily for us, Hamski makes a tool for this. And what they've got is, along with this level here, they actually have a rod that you can screw into it. And this rod is what you're gonna use for a third axis adjustment because you're gonna not necessarily worry about the bubbles on there. But what you're gonna do is look at the way this is aligned up with the string. So you see the string behind me. What I'm gonna do is actually get to full draw. I'm gonna lean down a little bit, like a simulated downward shot. And I'm gonna make sure that when the string is lined up with this end and that end, that the level in my scope is level. If it's not, it's gonna show me that my third axis is off. And then from there, I'll know that I need to do a little bit of an adjustment on um, what I'm looking for as far as uh, left and right on that scope itself. So using my normal grip, the way that I'm gonna shoot this bow, I actually notice that as I'm angling down with this, the bubble is not level whenever I have the, um, the string lined up with both sides of this bar. So if I'm looking at the bubble, it's actually angling where the bubble is angling over to this side. So that's telling me that as I'm aiming down, that this scope housing needs to start coming back towards me a little bit more because it's taking the bubble angle uh, and it'll change it to where it'll center it back up. So once I have my third axis set up using the Hamsky tool and the string, like we saw previously, there's one last step that I like to take, and that's actually shooting the third axis in. Uh, now, this is gonna be an additional video that I'm gonna do later on, and once I have this video done, I'll link it up here above. That way you can go ahead and view that in addition to this. But what I'm gonna actually do is get out to a range where I can shoot downhill and shoot uphill and then check the patterns on the groups. And what I mean by that is, if when I'm shooting downhill, if I notice that my arrows start grouping to the left of middle, and when I'm shooting uphill, my arrows start shooting and grouping to the right of middle, then I know that my third axis is still a little bit off. And what I'll do with that is still adjust this and um, you know take what I need to in consideration to get everything hitting in the middle, but that's gonna be a different video that I do, one in the future that I'll show you. For now, I'm as far along as I can with this. Next week's video is going to be how to set up a peep height, um, what I'm looking at based off of what game you're gonna be shooting, um, how to find an initial set point, how to set one up on a brand new string, and um, some just tips and some tricks that I use along the way. To be able to show you what I'm gonna do as far as getting all this taken care of. Thank you all, and I appreciate you watching these videos. Thank you for sharing them, spreading the word that the Tuesday Tip of the Weeks are back. 
you haven't started uh, looking and checking them out, I've also got a new series come out now that's Full Draw Fridays. And what I'm going to be doing is just shooting a bow. So less talking, less tips like this, and just shooting. I've got a video out right now. I'll link it here in this one. It's me shooting at 90 yards with my 3D setup at a 3D deer target. Um, so it's just some fun and uh, just a different type of video for some people that just want to watch me shoot. But again, I appreciate everybody watching. I'll see you soon. Thank you.